Good afternoon, everybody. Very good afternoon to all of you. It is almost exactly five years since last we stood here and talked to you on the banks of the Singapore River. It was elections then, it is elections now. In between, we've had five exceptionally turbulent years with a global economic crisis, with major upheavals to our economy, and yet, despite this roller coaster ride, with outstanding performance by Singapore. How did we come through? It's the result of our being united, of our having a good government, it's the result of our working together and being something special and extra. Therefore, you see Marina Bay around us transformed what we dreamed of 10 years ahead. We have built most of it within the last five years. The IRs, the Flyer, the Banking and Financial Centre, all the skyline which you see when you watch the F1 race on TV. It's something special in the world. Our economy is growing strongly. Our homes have been upgraded with lifts and all kinds of improvement programs. Our schools have outstanding facilities. Our environment is better. Even today's rally is a bit more comfortable than last time's rally because we learned from last time and we put you all in the shade so that you can be comfortable and can concentrate, I hope, on listening to us. Yes, we face some problems. Cost of living worries people. Prices of houses concerns a lot of young couples. We are addressing them and we will continue to work at it. It will take us some time, but these are problems which we can solve. Our future is bright. There are risks. I don't want to go into a long lecture, but you've just heard Taman, and he's explained to you all the problems in the global economy. But it is not just economic problems which can hurt us. There could be security challenges as well. Osama bin Laden was killed yesterday. Good news. But people learning from Osama bin Laden, many of them all around the world, Al-Qaeda franchises, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, Al-Qaeda in Aceh, not very far from Singapore. And some of them have heard of Singapore. So we have to be prepared for these challenges. And we are, never forget, a small boat on a stormy ocean, not a nuclear aircraft carrier. So we set our direction, we sail towards our goal, but at the same time, we have to watch the wind and the tide, and we have to take our chances when we can. And when the wind comes, put up your sail, go with it. And if it takes you slightly off course, never mind. We will tack and we will come back the next gust of wind. And so we make progress. If we hadn't done this, we wouldn't be here today. Five years ago, the opportunities to have IRs in Singapore came up. We seized it. We started going and got them going before the financial crisis. If we hadn't done that and missed the chance, missed the boat, you won't have Marina Bay like this today. Last year, we got another gust of wind. Growth was strong, markets were good, we were ready. We went for it, we got 14.5% growth. Had we not done that, 
and taken in a few more foreign workers and accepted the crowding and the trains and in the public places, you would not have had the budget surpluses. We would not have had the grow and share package this year. So we can't go exactly on a straight line from point A to point B and have everything just perfect, every spot. There will be detours, side tracks, side effects from our decisions. So IRs are good, but because of the IR, more Singaporeans are at risk of problem gambling. More families are at risk. High growth is good, but because of growth, we have to take in somewhat more foreign workers. We have to be prepared to accept a little bit more congestion for the time being. These are real problems. We will tackle them. But I hope you will understand that when these problems vex you or disturb you or upset your lives, please bear with us. We are trying our best on your behalf. And if we didn't quite get it right, I'm sorry, but we will try and do better the next time. <laughs> to secure our future, we need to look forward. We need to generate growth and jobs by attracting new investments and making ourselves more competitive, stronger. We need to make progress for our low-income workers, for every sweeper, every cleaner, every security guard, every driver, every cook. And we are building a Devon Nair Institute for Employment and Employability. It will come up in Jurong, and it will be a worthy institution which will help our low-income workers upgrade themselves. And NTUC is doing it with us. So thank you, NTUC. We need to upgrade our education for our children, for our young people. So we are building many new institutions, new universities, the Singapore University of Technology and Design with MIT. The Singapore Institute of Technology for many polytechnic graduates to go on to get good degrees. The ITE colleges, East is up, West has just come up in Chua Chu Kang, Central is coming up in Ang Mo Kyo, my place, last but I hope best, and it will look after many, many of our workers and give them technical skills to earn a good living. We need to improve our housing and our urban landscape. So we are remaking our heartlands, home upgrading, home improvement, neighborhood renewal, remaking our heartlands so that every HDB estate will be beautiful. So long as you do not go and litter and drop rubbish around the area, we will make it beautiful for you to enjoy and to look after. Our hospitals will get better, especially for the older people. We have Ku Teck Puat Hospital already up in Nisun. We have the Ng Teng Fong Hospital building in Jurong. And we have a new hospital in Sengkang coming up. Name not given yet, we are open for volunteers. But overall, we need a good government a good government which will realize these programs, a good government which will help you make the most of your effort. So when you work, every bit of effort counts. You're not wasting time. You're not doing unproductive work. You're not marching and counter-marching. You are being productive, maximized, producing value, doing well for yourself. We need a good government to engage your energies, 
your ideas, your enthusiasm and passion, and keep Singapore special for a long time to come. I think I can say that Singapore has a good government. It works well for Singaporeans. It enjoys your support, your confidence. It compares well with almost any other country in the world. In fact, people hold us up as a model of how governments should work. And it has high international standing. The Chinese come, study us. The Indians come, study us. The Arabs come, look at us. Even the Americans and the British come and look and say, we can't do it, but this is something very interesting and impressive. But good as we are, we and the PAP in particular must never become self-satisfied. The PAP, you may wear white, but that doesn't give you an automatic right to become the government. You put on the whites, but win the respect of voters every time, every election. And never forget that we are here to serve the voters, to serve Singaporeans, and not to lord it over people. No government is perfect. We can have our best in intentions, make our best efforts, but from time to time, mistakes will happen. We will make mistakes. We made a mistake when we let Maslamat run away. We made a mistake when Orchard Road got flooded. Then there are other mistakes which we have made from time to time, and I'm sure occasionally will happen again. I hope not too often. But when it happens, then we should acknowledge it, we should apologize, take responsibility, put things right. If we have to discipline somebody, we will do that. And we must learn from the lessons and never make the same mistake again. But it is difficult to be perfect every time because the world is undergoing very rapid and massive changes. And very often we have to act with incomplete information or under uncertain conditions. You don't know whether we will have growth next year 5% or 2%. You don't know whether you can get another investment project next year when a good investment project comes along this year. You don't know whether there will be some crisis in the world which can hit us like a tsunami. So, therefore, we don't always get things perfectly right. And I give you two examples where things didn't turn out like we hoped. HDB flats. We had a sharp recession just three years ago, in fact, two years ago, in 2009, we had a surplus of flats. We didn't expect that in the middle of 2009, after this sharp downturn, things would pick up suddenly, strongly, and the wind would catch us, and everybody would want flats, and suddenly the demand would press flat prices up. If we could have predicted this, I think we would have ramped up our building plan earlier, built more flats earlier, and I think we would have saved many Singaporeans some angst. Similarly, with our public transport, we enjoyed high growth, higher than we expected. But with high growth, we had more population increase than we expected because we had more foreign workers come in and we had to accept them because we wanted them to fill the jobs which were being created to support the investments, the projects which were coming in. 
So as a result, we have more congestion. Our public transport is more crowded. Our MRTs, particularly during peak hours, it's a jam. If we could have predicted this, if we had known that we were going to do so well, then even in the middle of the downturn in 2009, when things looked very, very gloomy, we should have moved aggressively and expanded our MRT network. Then, today, we'll have more network, more capacity, and I think Singaporeans will have a more comfortable ride. So we didn't get it perfect. And I appreciate and I sympathize with Singaporeans when they tell me and they tell the government repeatedly that this is impacting us, affecting us, do something about it. Well, we are sorry we didn't get it exactly right, but I hope you will understand and bear with us because we are trying our best to fix the problems. Building 22,000 flats this year, opening one new MRT line or extension line every year for the next seven years, investing in our people, in our future. Coming back on course, continuing to make progress. I would say that overall, the Singapore government has been right more often than wrong. And the PAP has been right more often than it has been wrong. Because otherwise, we would not be here today. Singapore would not be here today. We could easily have become like Iceland or Ireland or Greece in the financial crisis. We've had a PAP government in Singapore now for more than 50 years, since 1959. Our ideals, our passion hasn't changed. But our policies have been updated, our approach has shifted, our style has changed. You know MM's style. He tells it like it is. When he tells you something, you know exactly what he is thinking and what he is talking about, straight from the shoulder. No ifs, no buts, solid, hard talk. You know, I think you have got used to our style. We understand the hard truths. We understand what we need to do, but we, don't, we cannot do it, and we don't try to do it, MM style. We do it our way. We spend some time to talk, to explain, to persuade, to understand the difficulties and the hesitations to overcome some of these working problems so that we can go in the right strategic direction. And it's a difference in generations. Generations between MM, STEAM, and my team. Generations between your parents and you. And we discuss this often in Cabinet. And MM says, why don't you do things in a certain way? Proceed. It's important, critical for Singapore. And we say, yes, we understand, but please let us do it our way. Because we are different from you, and I think Singaporeans, it's a different generation from the Singaporeans who worked with you and built this Singapore in the 1950s, in the 1960s, and 70s. So give us time. We, I think we know what we are doing. We will work with Singaporeans in our own way to deliver results. So MM understands that. But MM is MM. And whether it is ordinary times, whether it's election time, you can be sure it's still the same MM. But this is the PAP government, me, my team, and we are taking it forward. Same strategic direction, but doing it our way. So I hope voters will understand and will support what we are doing. Apart 
from a good government, to get a good government there, we need a good system of government. And what do I mean when we say a good system of government? You must have elections which produce decisive results. You must have voters have the incentive to vote for the right candidates. In other words, voters must be motivated to vote for the parties and the people who will look after them. You must have parties which will pursue responsible policies, which are not bad for Singapore. And in Parliament, we must have opportunity for serious debate and for alternative views to be expressed and to be heard and to be taken account of. If you go by these standards, I think we have a good political system. Our election system, first past the post. That means you just count the votes and the most votes wins. Simple, straightforward, produces a strong government with a clear mandate to run the country. In the constituencies, MPs look after the town councils, look after your estates. So voters have an interest. Vote for the MP who will take care of your estate, take care of your property, take care of your investment, your nest egg. Whether it's Ang Mo Kyo or Al Junid, the voters have to think the same considerations when they vote. Parties have to pursue good policies, or at least not so bad policies. Why? Because I have a GRC system, so every party has to pay attention to minorities, to the views of minorities, to the concerns of minorities, to the leadership of the minority communities. And you see, even the opposition parties, whether it is Workers' Party or SDP or NSP, having to make a special effort to get minority Malay and Indian candidates to speak about minority issues. I think that's not just because they are well-intentioned, it's because we designed the system right. And then in Parliament, we have the NMP and the NCMP system, so that there will always be at least 18 opposition or nominated MPs in Parliament. So opposition voices are never shut out. We are not a one-party system in Singapore. We have one dominant party, but it's an open system. There are five or six parties contesting this election. There must be another 10 or 20 parties which exist in Singapore, which are for the time being sleeping resting, but there are many parties in Singapore. And the system is open and easily contested. Not hard to feel a team and to run. In fact, if you look at this election, all you need to do is to go onto the Facebook page and put a posting there, lend me some money. I need to pay for my deposit. And you may get people lending you money to pay for your deposit. And if you don't have enough candidates, no problem. Go to the other opposition party, lend me some candidates, pinjam. And if we don't win, we will return him to you. So I am the beneficiary of that in Ang Mo Kyo, because with all this pinjam and pinjam, I now have a contest in Ang Mo Kyo, which is very good for me and for my people. But it's also good for the system that our politics is open, because then MPs are on their toes. If they don't work, they will lose voter support. They must work hard for you. And as long as they work hard for you, I would say they deserve your support. Please give them your support.
It's very good that in this election, almost all the seats are contested. I think it's also good that if you look at the opposition candidates, the average standard has gone up. It's good because it means the PAP MPs have to work harder to serve residents. It means that voters have to pay attention what is at stake and make sure that they follow the issues. And at the end, I hope that the voters will weigh the choices carefully, decide which party will look after them well, whether in their constituency or in Parliament, and make the wise choice for themselves. But after the election is over, we have to come together again as one country to build our future together. And that means all of you have to be part of the part of the effort. You are not passive passengers bought a ticket sitting behind. You should be active participants, doing community work, growing new businesses, building social institutions, creating our Singapore. In Parliament, between elections, issues will be fully aired, debated, argued. But at the end of the debate, you must reach a conclusion, you must reach a decision. If possible, we should have a consensus. Then we move ahead. Then come the next elections that we offer ourselves in front of the voters and you give us a report card. We present our report card and you decide whether we have served you well overall over the last five years. If in between elections every day is as exciting as these nine days, then I think Singaporeans will have no time to cari makan because nothing else will happen except politics and we will do ourselves a lot of harm. Some opposition parties say, build us up, we will be in parliament, we will check the PAP. We will help the PAP to do better. Never heard of that. They will help the PAP to make a mess so that they will take over from the PAP. It's quite understandable. They are entitled to do that. We've asked them to admit it. Some do, like the Reform Party. Others, like the Workers' Party, like Han and Ho. But they stop short of saying that. They want to get your vote speaking softly. But is it good for Singapore to have government and opposition fighting each other all the time in Parliament, blocking each other, preventing business from being done, creating confusion and havoc? It happens in many countries. You can see it. Belgium, they had their election more than a year ago. A few days ago, they celebrated the first anniversary of their last general election. Why did they have to celebrate a first anniversary? Because after 12 months, they have not yet succeeded in forming a new government. The old government is still a caretaker. For one year, the caretaker is the boss. In Taiwan, Politics is an ongoing business, very exciting. Every night you turn on the Taiwanese TV, the most entertaining programs, not soap opera, but politics. And if you watch the Taiwanese parliament, even more exciting. They slap each other, they pull people's hair, they swing handbags, they fight. We have no class in comparison but I think we are not bad. Or you take Philippines. The perfect checks and balances, like the US, but even more. The president comes from one party, the vice president comes from a different party. And they fight one another. Legislation gets nowhere. Whenever the president leaves, 
the next president starts to investigate the previous one for corruption. Happening now. So that's why when the Workers' Party says First World Parliament, so we ask them, where is your First World? They say, don't have, but it's First World. Because when you ask for the real samples, you see the sample, you know you don't want to buy this per merchandise. This is bad merchandise. Our system works. We've adjusted it, we've made it work slowly over the years. Keep on adjusting, improving it. But don't break it. We also depend on good people to run the system. Because if you have duds running the system, it may be the best system in the world, it will fail. And that's why I put a lot of effort into making sure we have the right team fielded by the PAP this time. With many capable, committed people with potential who can take over from me, who can mobilize Singaporeans, who can make Singapore work. You've seen some of them, you've heard some of them. In fact, several of them were speaking here today, talking to you, getting practice talking to Singaporeans. And I believe they are good and they will get better. And by 2020, they must be ready to lead Singapore when my generation retires. There are many young voters in this general election and you have a different perspective on the world and you're idealistic, you're questioning, you're looking for values to uphold, causes to believe in. Your approach to the general elections will be different from the older generation, from your parents. Because for your parents this is a seventh or eighth or tenth general election and they will vote based on gut instinct and loyalty and long experience of what they have known works in Singapore. And they know what can go wrong if you have a bad government in Singapore. So it's important that young people think carefully about your vote. What can each party offer? Who can serve you best? Whose plans will give you the brighter future? This country belongs to the young people. You belong to the country, but the country belongs to you. The older generation, including me, not so old, but older, we are building this so that you, the younger generation, can inherit it from us. And it's for you to build on it further to improve on what we have been able to do, to change what is no longer relevant, and to shape according to your dreams and your visions. So please come forward, take your part in building this nation. But also, please take good care of Singapore. It's a precious jewel. Understand it. How it works. What the important components are. What is the spirit of it. How to make it better. We are actively engaging the young people, the PAP, in many different ways. And we have enthusiastic young members of the YP who are of this generation, active, debating policies, studying other countries, serving residents, active on the internet, helping the PAP to be there, doing battle in cyberspace, active on the ground in this campaign, organizing, mobilizing, supporting, helping. We are very grateful to our YP volunteers for their support. This election is about your future. 
It's a bright future for Singapore and for you. You are well educated, well prepared for the new world. Singapore is well organized in a very strong position, nationally and internationally. We are competitive, we are prospering, we enjoy a high reputation, and we have many more things to do. So do well. Do well for yourself, but do well also for Singapore. We are pushing ahead with confidence. After this general election, we will have the mandate to take Singapore forward another five years. And in five years' time, you will see Singapore has changed. And in 10 years' time, you and your children will see that our whole island will be transformed. Transformed not just through the government's efforts or the PAP's efforts, but by young people engaging themselves in nation building. So let's make a vow. Tomorrow will be better than today. But work at it and secure our future together. Thank you very much. To end today's rally, I'd ask all my colleagues and fellow candidates to come forward with me and let's end it with three cheers. Majula PAP, Majula Singapura. Majula PAP, Majula PAP, Majula Singapura. Majula PAP, Majula Singapura. Majula PAP, Majula Singapura. Thank you very much.